Welcome to the Sports Hangover. I'm Michael Benatar, joined alongside J Dog. Mike, it's good to see you. We debated starting with Kate Middleton, but I think we'll start with NFL and save Kate for a few minutes, right? Yeah, I mean, we could even start uh, maybe a little Oscars. You came over oh. last night. We watched some Oscars. We watched almost the whole thing. You left right before Best Movie was announced. But it was, uh, overall, what would you rate the Oscars? Because I felt like it was a, a solid performance this year. I don't know if you phrased that right. I left before Al Pacino stumbled onto the stage yes, and yes, yeah, 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 said yeah. some random words that uh, he didn't say the right thing. So he just kind of blurted out Oppenheimer. No one really knew if that was best picture. Kind of yeah. sums up Al Pacino at this point. Though. It, it was weird because I went to the bathroom like, oh, Al Pacino's going to be on stage for a little bit. Maybe talking sounded like he was mumbling <laughs> around and Aaron's like, nope, nope. They just announced the winner. I'm like, what? He didn't even announce the winner. He said, my eyes see Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, like, what that's... a weird way to say for best picture. But that's part of the Oscars. Like the weird stuff I think works the best. Like that fo that famous flub a few years ago, we still talk about it. We don't talk about yeah. all the good things that happened. So it was, I mean, the was Oscars song. were fine. Uh, yeah. I, thought, I thought Ken was the best. Uh, yeah. The Ken song, right? It was good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was like a solid. It felt like everybody was happy to be there instead of like previous years. It felt like, why are we here? What are we doing? It's felt good. I liked it. Jimmy Kimmel's a good host. We both agreed Great on host. that. Yeah. I, I um, love him as a host. The crowd was into it. It started early, four o'clock here in LA, which Very is early. which is great. I love yeah. an afternoon award show. Get in and get out. Um, it was good weather here in LA. I was telling you for the Grammys a few months ago, uh, stars were running in in the pouring rain and yeah. we've had blue skies here in LA. I know people have been worried about our, our weather this winter, but it's actually been nice the last few days. Finally, it's been nice. We, we've had a lot of rain, and that's something that we don't get a lot of. So I'm glad well, it's finally I, over. I brought the rain. Very L.A. thing to do, by the way. Invite me over for the Oscars. Yeah, it's like I, I, I told you, I'm used to coming over for football, getting excited. It's like, hey, come over for the Oscars. Not quite the same. Not not the same. We didn't have a big party. There are parties we probably could have went to, but this was this was fine. This was good. Yeah. That's all we do. Uh, we are Oscars. dying to talk about Kate Middleton, but again, we're going to yeah. do NFL first, just for the people. All right, let, let's do some NFL. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened. Uh, obviously, no tampering allowed, but everybody got deals exactly at Okay, let's start today. there with tampering. Yeah. What is the NFL doing? They're supposed to start at noon Eastern today is when legal yep. tampering opens. And I swear by 12.05 Eastern yeah. time, there were completed deals all over the league. Like that, You don't negotiate in five minutes. Nothing happens in five minutes, especially in corporate America, let alone NFL contract. Well, a lot of it, too, was Russ was already like a few guys were traveling, meeting people. Well, so Russ could because he was released. If oh, you're released, true, yeah, yeah. you were free to negotiate before that. That's why Russ spent all of Friday afternoon with the Steelers. He was a uh, wined and dined by, by Mike Tomlin. He was. Um, and that's happening. Mike, let's break down all the news. Can let's we go. get a little let's bullshit go. or believe? Uh, yeah, I can, I'll find it for you. There it is. Bullshit or believe time. Bullshit or believe time. Shit or believe. All right. A lot of these are hot off the presses. I figure we can go down the list of the, the big ones, not all of them, okay, but the okay, big right. ones. And, and we go bullshit or believe. Will it work or is it bullshit, basically, okay, is I the like game it. that, I like that it. this I like is. It. So let's start let's right go. there with Russ. Russ to the Steelers. I think you're the one to sign off on this because you, you yeah. called Russ's downfall in 2021 in Seattle. A long you knew time it wouldn't ago, work yeah. in Denver. Mike, all eyes on you. Is it going to work in Pittsburgh? I'm I'm giving this one if we were grading it, if we were going, hey, is this an A plus? This is this is a solid A move. By the Steelers. I, I think the Steelers got a good deal. They're paying this man $1.2 million, probably cheapest guy on the salary. Uh, I think this is great. They're getting rid of, you know, clearing house on Kenny. Mitch is gone. I know Kenny's still there. Uh, yeah. But I, I just think this is, this is great. Rudolph probably is gone. I think this is a good move. They got somebody in. Spice it up a little. This man can throw. There was stats out there. Russ has thrown more touchdowns in the whole career of Kenny Pickett. I think this is a good move. I'm I'm writing off on it. I believe I believe in Russ here. I think Tomlin's gonna whip him into shape a little bit. This is a no bullshit franchise. Denver, I don't know what was going on there, but that man was, you know, let's ride. Denver, let's ride. He's not gonna be riding here. He's gonna he's gonna be cooking and he's gonna start at the bottom and fight his way up. And I think this is a good spot for him. This is huge news because you know Russell better than anyone. Like I said, you called his downfall. You, yeah. you called him struggling in Denver, and you're calling your shot. He's going to be good for the Steelers. Is that I what think, you're saying? Jeremy, how about this? Imagine somebody gave you, a, like, you were trying to, you're trying to buy a car, and you see all these cars. They're all really expensive, but then somebody's yeah. like, hey, I, I, I don't need this car. And it's like a solid, like, great car, still runs, looks really good, and they're giving it to you for a dollar. That's but wait, how good does the car look? The car is defective. The car had a rough 2023. The owner, the past owner 
wants to give away the car. He's willing to pay 99% of know, the car. I Do I want that car? Listen, something. maybe the guy defaulted. The guy had to get rid of it. He just wanted defaulted. to move on. Walmart he wa- defaulted. Yeah, he wanted to move on. And I think this is a great <laughs> spot for them to move on. And Pittsburgh gets the benefit of it. Now, I, I would have like put something in his like, contract. Maybe don't go to another AFC team because this might hurt Denver more than they think it will. But I think this is great. And Pittsburgh's, this is great. What do you, th- I mean, what do you think? What do you think about Russ going there? <laughs> I, I'm with you. I believe it. I think oh, it's a okay, great move because it's a one Dude. one year for $1 million. There's a saying in sports that you can't have a bad one-year deal because you can always there cut the guy. They always move on. It's like you're never committed long-term. Like the Broncos yeah. are still paying all this. And so it's a great deal for the Steelers cap. And I think it's a great deal for Kenny Pickett because Kenny's not the guy. And you need someone better than Kenny. Yes. And Steeler fans will disagree with this. Lou, you're listening right now. I know you wanted Kenny to have another shot. It's not happening. There's no QB competition here. Russ is not signing to have a QB competition. Russ is signing to start. And Kenny, your first round quarterback with small hands is now your backup. And Steeler fans like have to get over that and then start to embrace Russ. But they have to get to that point. And we haven't heard from a mutual friend. We we heard he was on a three day bender in Las Vegas, and we haven't really heard back from him. He we should have done he, a wellness check today. Yeah, probably. We, should, we should probably should have. But a three day uh, trip to Vegas is probably the longest he's gone since he was twenty one years old. So we haven't checked in yet. Hopefully, we get a report. I, from I do have a. Fans. I do actually have a quote from the oh. Mauser uh, family. I, I got a statement. Okay. I reached out for a statement ahead great, of the great. show. Like this uh, this like is this. a this is quote uh, pretty much on the fence, as you're saying. Not not sure what to think about Russ except what a deal salary wise I thought he was playing pretty good last year the quote goes on to say this is a statement from the Mauser Steeler fan okay, base okay quote I hope Kenny takes it well <laughs> they they are not they are they not moving Kenny. on they just can't move on from Kenny but you have oh to move on God. here they love Kenny so much. Is this from uh, from Big Big Lou or Little? This Lou? is from Little Lou. Little, little Lou. Lou. He's alive. He's he's well he enough is, to he text you that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I had to well, check in for a statement. What do you What do you think about that? Uh, I think this man, uh, our mutual friend, is might still be dazed and confused from the weekend. So we'll see how he feels about this later on. I think he'll be much happier when he starts seeing the performance on the field because I think this opens it up a little bit more than just like. Who are we going to play this week? Is it going to be Rudolph? Is it going to be Mitch? Is it going to be Kenny? It's like, okay, you're, you're done now. It's now Russ, and I think it's if, a lot better. Yeah, if they really cared about Kenny Pickett's feelings, they would have brought Mason Rudolph back and said, hey, let's just run it back, and you guys yeah. can both be mediocre on the same field together and see which mediocre guy we go with. And they're not. They're trying something different. They met for six hours, like I said, on Friday. I think Tomlin sold Russ. Russ sold Tomlin. I think it was like a date, right? They had to woo each other. And it worked out. And I think if there's any issues, if Russ is really weird in the locker room, you cut his ass and you move on because it's one year, one mil, and it doesn't matter. But but I do like that Tomlin's – I think Tomlin really can, like, make these guys, like, no bullshit. Like, he controlled Antonio Brown, uh, Le'Veon Bell, and then, you know, they leave and then their careers end. I think this is, like – This is like rehab for Russ. He's going there and he's about to go through some drills and some mindset uh, focuses. Quarterback rehab. Yeah. He's going to be a different guy out there on the field. Hopefully he's just a little bit more like he wants it more. And I think this is his shot because he has to pay to play and kind of see what he's going to do next year because this is a kind of contract here for him, right? He can get a big, bigger payout next year. He's Yeah, well, keep making one for one because he's already yeah. getting the $140 million from from Walmart, whatever it is. I have a question. You know, let's ride was his big thing in sure, Denver. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on what his slogan might be in Pittsburgh? Just to get you started as you think about it, mm. there's one I thought of. Uh, let's dig because coal oh, miners, Steelers, Steelers yeah, let's yeah. dig. Yeah. Uh, it's I don't, kind of weird, I don't, you but know what? what's up Russ's alley? Tomlin, not allowing any phrases. It's just straight to work. He's just going to go to the press conferences. No phrases, no let's ride, no nothing. Not, this man what's he going to say on the Jumbotron? This one man will be silent. That's it. He's just going to say, come on, Steeler Nation. Let's go, let's go play. That's it. Nothing nothing wild, nothing different. Keep it keep it simple there. I like that he's going there. I think this is really good for Steelers. I, I'm excited for Steelers games, at least, because they're pretty unwatchable, typically. So at least yeah, they're yeah, more yeah. watchable yeah, going forward. Yeah, Another QB on the move, Mike, Kirk Cousins. Uh, you called it last week. You did, had Atlanta. Yeah. Great call by you. Four years, $180 million. So Let's talk about the money first. He's 35 years old. He's... He's our age. He's my age. I don't know if you're still 35. Uh, I'm no longer 35. At least one of us still yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of money for a 35-year-old. It's a lot of money, but I, I don't think it's weird. It's almost like if you have no other options, what else are you going to do? You're going to get Kirk Cousins, who's been passed around quite a bit, right? He went to Washington, then he was over in uh, Minnesota, and now he's here. He's never really done anything for a franchise that make it make them tons better and Super Bowl caliber, but they made them good enough to play well and kind of get where you need to go. 
So hopefully the talent around them is pretty good, right? We got a it lot is. of guys. We they got, got Bijan, they got Drake Pitt. London, yeah. Kyle Pitts still exists. Yeah. We, we he does still exist. So <laughs> hopefully a little more next year in fantasy. But I think this is the year that Kirk Cousins is kind of like, okay, you've been doing this for the past few years. You have talent around you. I think he'll be good. And he's in a dome. And we mentioned that is perfect <laughs> for Kirk. Be in a dome. A lot of money. But what else is Atlanta going to do, right? So, so you're believing in this signing for Atlanta? I am. I am believing a lot of believable uh, signings today. So, <laughs> so far, we'll get to some. Is, yeah. We'll get to some bullshit. Uh, I'm calling bullshit on the contract. It's just they okay. bid too much, and like I'm going through salary cap hell right now with my team, Miami Dolphins, who lost a lot of dudes. I see that the salary cap is real, and Atlanta is going to feel the effects of this oh, yeah. contract. There's a reason Minnesota wanted them. They were negotiating all weekend, and finally mm-hmm. today, the tampering opens. It's like, we can't pay 180, Can, um, and I kind of agree with that for Minnesota. I'm curious because I, I wonder if this is something similar to where like uh, a Justin Fields calls Kirk. Like, Kirk, listen, I'm probably not going to be here next year. I'm trying to get traded. I want to move. I want to get out of here. Is that a possibility where the guys on the team are talking and be like, look, I'm not going to be here next year. Don't sign. It's going to be rough for you. And I think it's it kind of depends on where you want to go, right? It's like all these guys want the money. And we'll talk about Baker. Baker got paid and all these guys got paid. It's going to hurt them down the line. So it's kind of like one guy has to get paid there. And if Justin Je- Jefferson wants to get all that money and – did, he didn't sign a contract, right? Nothing, nothing new on his end. He's still, no, he's still he, there. He might be traded, might stay. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I think eventually you run out of money. I know the salary cap went up like a little bit, right? It went from like two something to it went, it went a lot higher this year. Yeah, not not a lot yeah. higher, but it went up. And I just think you know, if these guys are talking, just dip out. If you're friends with your teammates and you think it's a good scenario, so I don't know. I think I'm, it's... I'm okay with the the Vikings plan here. So I I believe it for the Vikings okay. bullshit on the Falcons. I think they move on, get younger at quarterback. The Vikings signed an edge rusher from Houston. They need help on defense. I think they they overpaid. And and you're right. So Kirk will play all the home games in Atlanta. I love the idea of a big divisional road game in the New Orleans Dome. That's another yeah. one. Mix in one or two more, you have like 12 games inside. And and you know as a better, he only covers when he's at 1 o'clock inside. Yeah, yeah. A lot of 1 o'clock games here. You'll be in Carolina. You'll be in Tampa. It'll be good. We'll, we'll see what happens with them. All right, Mike. The quarterback moves keep coming. Here's Baker Mayfield. $50 million guaranteed <laughs> to stay with the Bucks. I think we can agree if it was another $4 million deal, we love it. What do you think about $50 Fifty million guaranteed. It's fifty million guaranteed, hundred million dollar contract for four years. Yeah, three so years. Three years. Okay, so yeah. that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. Listen, I didn't think he was going to sign there, but Mike Evans yeah. signed, and I feel like it was kind of like a bait. Like Mike, you sign first, then I can get my deal. Kind of felt like they were strong armed into the deal, right? They were like, okay, we we got to sign Baker. We got no other options. Yeah. I, I don't know. I wouldn't grade this one as like a great move, but he did play well last year. I wonder if they're going to get anybody else over there. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm, I'm okay on it. I'm like mediocre on this move. Not, not I agree sold. with you. I think, I think they had to bring them back. Like on one hand, they're not negotiating against anyone. Cause who else is giving no. Baker 50 mil after one good season when he just got four mil on the other hand, you can't sign Mike Evans and let Baker walk. We talked about that and that's like yeah. so stupid and backwards. So they couldn't do that. So I think Bucks fans are happy, somewhat believe it. If yeah. they go like 10 and seven, that's fine. That might be all the Bucks want to do. Right. I mean, that it's might still be all they're trying to, to do. It's still an easy division, right? It's like do you still you, you still have Kirk up there. Kirk is beatable. We have Derek Carr still in, or maybe Jameis in New Orleans, and we have Bryce Young in Carolina. Like it's an easy division to still win, like possible to beat that division. So I feel like it's fine. I don't know. The South is weird, right? It's like I don't know what's going on down there, but they're just grabbing at straws. And I think they're doing. How about this? I think the Bucks are doing really well after giving Tom Brady a lot of money and not having a lot of options available after that and kind of coming back pretty strong, making the playoffs this year. I think it's pretty good for them. So that's a good point. So we'll say believe based on that. I saw someone this weekend said the Bucks are executing the post Brady plan better than the Patriots. And that's so true. Uh, yeah. I, and, yes, and the Bucks yeah. have had much less time to figure it out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The They're Patriots still floundering. Uh, here's another quarterback on the move. Mike, I'm just going to come out and say, I love Go. this one. I believe, okay. believe, believe. Gardner Minshew to Las Vegas to oh. throw dimes to Devontae real? Adams. Yeah, that happened. I didn't see that on my list. I Breaking not... news. Okay. All right. So Minshew to Vegas. I love that a lot. Oh, you because did, Mac yes. because Mac went over Mac Jones went over to Jacksonville. Well, that's oh, not really yeah, Minshew was, he's in, he's in, Minshew uh, was with Colts. the Colts. Sorry. Yeah, the Colts. He almost led the Colts to the playoffs when Richardson went down. That running back dropped that pass late in the season or else the Colts would have won a playoff game. Uh, I thought Minshew had a great year. I love this going to another dome in Vegas. I do like it. I think it's a solid move. Jimmy's out, right? And then Jimmy's they got, gonna be out. Yeah. They got the rookie there. 
Uh, he's not good. O'Connell's no, no okay, good. Okay, I, I like this a lot. Good for good for Minshew. Really fits well in Vegas too. That I put a heart party. next to that one. I love it so much. That's like really I, good. I just love that. Yeah. Go sling it for Antonio yeah. Pierce. Uh, all right, let's get to one more quarterback. Uh, you mentioned a Mac Jones, now the backup quarterback for the Jags. The Patriots uh, post Brady investment, the first round pick yeah. traded for the six round pick. How about this bullshit or believe on the Patriots trading him away? Bullshit or believe? Oh, I'm trading him away. I think. You needed to do that. You need to get yeah. rid of them. They're clearing house. They got a new uh, coach out there. I think it's great for Mac. I Listen, my prediction, uh, my Sportsodomus prediction was Mac Jones was going to thrive somewhere else. I think this man might, you know. He's going to thrive? Maybe. I think he's going to thrive. I think a little backup play for him, come in. I think he might be the perfect backup out there. And when he comes in, he can play well, execute it, and do his job. And then uh, Trevor can come back in and play the game. Because last year, I think they were, like, lacking. Trevor couldn't get hurt. He's like, I'm playing the game. Well, I'm he got coming. hurt, like, seven times yeah. late in the year, and he kept coming back because they didn't like the backup option. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is a good backup option for them. especially uh, Mac like, Jones six. is from Jacksonville, so he goes home. Maybe that helps. Maybe it hurts. Who knows? Is yeah. he a big drinker like Blake Bortles? Will he be seen on the Jacksonville Beach I bars? So. I we don't so. know. I really um, so. But as a backup, I think it's a good move for the Jags and good for the Pats to get rid of him. All right, let's get to some playmakers. Gabe uh, Davis. Leaving the Bills to go to the Jaguars, maybe yep. replacing Calvin Ridley. Bullshit or believe on that one? Um, kind of bullshit on this one. I don't know if whoa, Gabe Davis whoa. is that good. Uh, a lot of complaining from Gabe during the offseason, right? Or was it with his, with his brother or was that uh, Diggs? The whole that Bills been... locker room was complaining all season. I, I Listen, I don't know if Gabe Davis that was is That Stephon Diggs, by the way, his yes, brother. Saying, so maybe, yeah. yeah. You're, yeah. I, I don't know if it, Gabe Davis is a guy I'm like, damn, I'm so happy I got Gabe Davis. I think it's good that you got somebody else that can catch the balls over there. But I don't think it's like a, a make or break the team kind of thing. So I, I think it's a loss for the Bills is what I would say. A bigger yeah, loss for the yeah. Bills and a gain for the Jags. Because Diggs has been, you know, mouthing off a little bit. We don't know their relationship. Who's yeah. the second receiver there now? The Bills have been in salary cap hell also. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, big running back move in the division. I, I think you called this one too. Saquon Barkley leaves the Giants, goes to the Eagles. Bullshit or believe, will the Eagles succeed with Saquon? The only thing I saw from this was uh... – Saquon and Hertz can both bench 600 pounds, so now they can push 1,200 pounds worth of bodies around during the tush push. Oh, it's for the push. They got it's him for the push. Oh, it's for the push. They're going to dominate the push. Two quadzillas here. just pushing <laughs> each other. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of muscle there. Uh, wow. I, I liked it. I think, how about this? It might not be great for Philly, but I think it was a great move for Barkley to get the hell out of New York. And I almost think it's a backhanded slap because you're going direct to a rival in conference, in division, and going play for them. I think this is a good move for Barkley. They've had him locked in there for years. Terrible play with Daniel Jones. It's like, yeah, get out bad of there. Save your, save your career. Go play somewhere else. It's a good point. It'll be nice to see Saquon on a good functioning offense for the first time yeah. ever. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. I'm going to say bullshit. Okay. Really overall, because the Eagles defense needed so much work and they didn't need running help. Like they're the best rushing team without Saquon Barkley. I don't know that it helps them a lot. It's kind of mm -hmm. a vanity pick. Yeah. And I don't know if they have enough money to spend on their defense. If they can still stock their defense and add Saquon, I'll like it more. We'll see okay. what that looks like okay. when the season starts. A few more running backs on the move. Big day for running backs. I thought this era yeah. was over, but it's I thought not. so too, but clearly uh, not. Josh Jacobs, who just turned twenty six, still a young man, hmm. nine years younger than Kirk Cousins. It's heading to the Green Bay Packers, and they released Aaron Jones. What do you think about that little swap for the Packers? I'm not I, – I listen, again, this is a good move for Josh Jacobs. He gets out of a bad situation in Vegas. Don't know really what's going on. Playing for the Packers, they look like they're a team that's kind of up and coming, doing – getting better. So I really like this for them. I don't know – how old was uh, – what's his name? Who, who Aaron not, Jones a, is, Aaron is Jones. over 30. He's over 30 for sure. And A.J. Dillon's still there or no? Yeah, speaking of big quads – is he is he older too? I felt like the AJ and uh, Jones were kind of the same player. Dylan was me. younger than Jones. Jones has been a, around for a long time, going back to the early Aaron Rodgers days. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's weird doing the court, uh, the running back thing because it's like a few other quarterbacks that like you know Swift and Pollard all moved. I'm like, I'm not excited about it. It didn't really like move my needle at all. So this one, this one is one of the bigger running backs with Barkley, but I don't know if it's going to really change much over there. Remember the running back calls, like the Zoom meetings last yeah. offseason? And it was all these guys. It was Saquon. Uh, it was Jacobs. It was Pollard. They're all getting um, ready. They're all getting paid. Uh, and they are getting money. So maybe those yeah. Zoom calls worked out. They're all changing teams. They just had yeah. to get to free agency. Like, 
the their teams were never going to pay him, but new teams would, and then that was the uh, the outcome of the I Zoom like call. That. I guess yeah. uh, yeah. I like Josh Jacobs in Green Bay. Okay, they got like seven years younger at running back. I think he has a lot to give still. Young legs. Yeah. Uh, Jordan loves ascending. I like that one. My last one, you mentioned it, Tony yeah. Pollard to the Titans. So Derrick Henry's out. Yep. The Cowboys didn't want Tony Pollard to me. Red flag. I'm going bullshit on this. I think the Titans have a lot of holes, and Pollard doesn't really solve them. No, I don't, I don't think Pollard solves anything over there. Uh, quarterback play, who's going to stay there? Who's going to quarterback? Is it Levis? Is it your boy? Uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. I no, he's free agent. Yeah. He's available. Oh, he's free agent. Okay, I don't know if yeah. he's going to get signed anywhere. Pollard just doesn't seem like he's going to be a great at Like, how are you going to beat Derrick Henry? Like Derrick Henry is yeah, the guy you want. Pollard. You don't want to replace you Derrick Henry. No. You want to replace the guy who replaces Derrick Henry. Exactly. So no, yeah, bullshit for me on this one. All right. So those are the moves it. so far. Uh, it's only Monday afternoon here in LA. Still we, a lot of moves to come. Well, this what week. about didn't uh, DeAndre Swift go to the Bears? I thought that was a good one for the Bears. Well, that didn't make my list. But tell us. Didn't tell make us your why. list. You didn't like. <laughs> I feel like they're getting ready to make a move. And then I did see something about Bears are now. Now I don't know if this is real. You know, Instagram, Twitter, a lot of stuff's fake. But it's supposedly the Bears are sticking with Fields and getting, like, the the biggest haul ever for a first round, first overall pick. And they're going to trade away their Whoa, first pick. Really? Supposedly. Now, if I was them, you could just trade to the third overall pick and get a ton of picks from that and still get a quarterback that could play or back up Justin Fields and still make a move. And I, and I think that might be the way to go because, it, listen, History has shown they have not done good in the draft. And I think this is a way to almost solidify yourself as a good drafter by saying, hey, take the first pick. We'll take the second, the third, the fourth, or the fifth pick because we got the ninth pick too. Get another quarterback that just falls in our lap. There are many quarterbacks up there that could potentially fall. We'll play with Justin Fields. We'll get all these other picks, and we'll get another guy over there. I think this might work out that way. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it doesn't feel like anybody liked the Justin Fields, like what they were trying to get for him. He's not a first round pick. He's not, maybe not a second round pick. Maybe he's like a third or two thirds, something like that. I don't know really what's going on there, but it didn't seem like any buyers or suitors were out there for Justin Fields on a new team. I agree with you, but that would not lead me to keep him and trade the number one overall pick if no one wants him. Like that's not a good reason to keep him and build around him. I, I do know, think they are running out of suitors for him. Like you look yeah. around the league, I don't know who Pittsburgh was on the list, Vegas was on the list, Atlanta, like now who? Denver, Minnesota. No. Like the Bears won't trade him in division to the Vikings, so I don't know where he's going. They might have to keep him just to be like a backup, or if someone gets hurt, like in training camp, then you get more for him. As far as trading the number one overall pick, Mike, they yes. just did that last year. They literally just did that. I know. You can't do it again, right? You can't do it every year. Didn't they kind of save themselves from not getting uh, Bryce? That was kind of like they, they saved it. They got. I mean, it they again. may have drafted C.J. Stroud for all we know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy to think that you can get the first overall again. I don't think you could make it yeah. the way it works that way unless you know you're trading to a really bad team that's struggling. But I, I just think if you can trade it and get it, get a third round, the, the third overall pick or the fourth overall pick, like I'm sure New England would be willing to trade, be like, hey, we want the first round over. Can you can you trade up? They got a new coach. Can you get the starting quarterback? I know they were looking at other guys. I don't know. I, I think we're in for a wild ride until the uh, the draft, but I'm, I'm curious to see what happens because I think some teams will change. And it's always hard to keep track. You start the football season, you're like, where are all these guys? So many guys move. So it's going to be kind of wild. This That's year. one of my favorite shows every August, September with you. When, <laughs> when I break the news to you of all the places these guys are, because I'm telling you on March 11th, oh, yeah. I'm not going to retain that. all of, all of yeah. that. Not, and still a lot of moves good. to go. Um, a lot of teams have to spend uh, like mine who lost uh, several starters today and haven't signed one player. Good. Good for you. But by the way, last night during the Oscars, you told me you're like, you should make some bets on futures. I bet the Atlanta Falcons to win the Super Bowl. And I think I was getting a lot of money for ten dollars. I think it's like twelve hundred. I told you to do it before today because yeah. Kirk would probably sign there today, and I'm sure that line moved a lot today. I'm right? sure I'll check it later, but yeah, yeah. I, I I think some of those new quarterbacks and new scenarios might be a lot better. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. Bijan um, Robinson finally in fantasy, an asset. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk Jake Paul, Mike Tyson at all? I'd rather get to Scandal City. All right, let's 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 just do Scandal City. All right, let's do Scandal City. <laughs> Time to dig up the dirtiest stories around the sport world in this week's Scandal City. All right. Uh, we talked about this last night. A lot of stuff going on. There is a Kate Middleton scandal, missing scandal. We don't really know. I'm going to try to lay out the timeline best I know. Maybe you could fill in some gaps that I'm missing. 
Excellent. And just at the and just at the top, as yeah. you set this up, we are not royals, people. We don't no. give a shit about the royals. But this, people, we are alerting you in case you're not already on TikTok. That there is something big going on Scandal. with Kate, with the royal family. They yes. are manipulating us in some way, and and something is going on with her. And we're going to get to it all here. So I, I love so, the timeline. Okay. Kate Middleton was last seen in December, and supposedly there's some sort of surgery she was going under for something. And we haven't seen her since. And there's like some fake photos that came out and one recently yesterday or the day before came out and it was a Photoshop photo. Then she tweeted saying, oh, just as a casual photographer, I, I like to edit my photos. This photo was not edited like a casual photographer. There was shit missing. There was arms twisted, fingers missing. You don't like just three like some... to four different places in the photograph that were blurry, not correct. Like not yes. one Photoshop mistake, at least yes. four of them. The the AP uh, killed the photo. They removed it because of uh, tampering to the photo. It is no longer there. It has been removed. Then she tweeted out about this. Now. It started kind of building in February. We're like, hey, guys, we have not seen Kate in a long, long time. Well, they announced that she went to the hospital for yes. abdominal surgery, that she wouldn't be seen again until Easter. And so they said all this like in January, I want to say maybe mm -hmm. late December, to try to get people off their back. And that's kind of okay in a way. Like maybe that was happening. But what's happened since the last few days really was the picture in the car that you mentioned. Yep. Yeah. The picture with, with the kids the for Mother's photo. Day, which had yeah. so many issues with it. Um, by the way, she didn't have her wedding ring on in that photo. And maybe that I, I heard from someone today, a, a loyal viewer of The Crown, mm. that you are supposed to study every photograph. And if something doesn't look right in a photograph, the palace is trying to tell you something. Oh, and the okay. palace wanted us to be aware that she was not wearing her wedding ring. However, they fudged up with everything else because she might not even be around or alive. Okay, so now I have conspiracies about where she may be or what is happening. So now we know during this timeline of her missing, we know that the king, King Charles, went into the hospital. Now, supposedly, there's a rumor going around that she was a organ donor for him and trying to help him keep alive. So that's a, that's one conspiracy. So we can oh, just slot that like over that. here. That's so maybe she's having a tough time recovering. Yeah. I yesterday thought King Charles was dead. Clearly, he's not. He was recovering, doing something. <laughs> you did think that. Yeah. <laughs> I did think he was dead. Now, the other one, this is the juiciest one I found. There's a guy named Thomas Kingston. Thomas Kingston was a banker, banker and financier who married into the royal family. He married Lady Gabriella Windsor, Queen Elizabeth's cousin, in May 2018. Previously, she da he dated Pippa, uh, P uh, yeah, Pippa Middleton, uh, Kate Kate's Middleton's sister sister and supposedly there was some whatsapp messages between him and kate and the theory goes that thomas may or may not have impregnated kate and that's why she went to the hospital for some sort of uh, forced surgery and then the the story gets a little right, in that scenario kate is cheating on william with this other man correct and then over the weekend this man thomas kingston was found dead with major head trauma in his apartment. This is like the Kennedys. This man is now dead. And don't know what the conspiracy is. All these people are like, oh, so sorry, blah, blah, blah. But he has been found dead with head trauma. So then the conspiracy goes, okay, did something happen to Kate? Is Kate, is, is Kate dead? Is Kate recovering from something that was forced upon her to recover? Or is she an organ donor, which might sound a little nicer and, you know, could be the real story. But this Thomas Kingston story seems a little weird. Now, listen, we, we're not royalty experts at all. I don't watch The Crown. I don't watch any of this. But this conspiracy is getting wild. And it's just like little things are like, okay, Photoshop photo. Is there a face impersonator of Kate driving around in the car and people are catching it and they're like no dimples anywhere and things are all different. Very weird. I will also say she did tweet out that like she was editing that photo that came out the other day. Which about Mike, I thought maybe that tweet was even worse than the original yes. picture they put out because too. the idea that the, the princess Kate is yeah. sitting at her MacBook, just manipulating photos yeah. no. on, to put out on the official Twitter while she's like so unwell that she can't even pose for a real photo. Like that was worse than the actual bad Photoshop. How, I will say this. If you were an amateur photographer and you're messing around with stuff, most times, Photoshop is like the end, it's something you want to do 
for fun and you're gonna edit something and be like oh i had like a smudge on my face can you remove that you're not moving people in it it does seem like so people are also thinking the head if you go back and look at the photo it seems like her face was some core uh, some sort of like photo shoot they did previously in the summer that they then the vanity fair uh cover yes is yes. like matched it can be a match exactly on the yes. face in the photo they put out yes. yesterday so a lot of weird things are going on i don't really know what but my tiktok feed is full and i really like the thomas kingston baby theory with Kate. i didn't know that one that bothers me that he's dead because that's very um yeah. real that's like the definition of palace intrigue that whole that yeah. whole angle of it something's going uh, on j-dog I, I i don't know if we're early on this or late because i just got on it last week when the suv photo came out with her mom driving mm. and i noticed like the dimples the mole was missing that's yeah. when i got on the story then the picture came out this weekend now we're fully invested but I don't think everyone's fully on it. Like we are still no. trying to get people to understand this is crazy shit. On one hand, the palace is known for this, right? For like thousands sure. of years, manipulating the press, doing their own thing their own way. Um, and maybe they've just always done it this way. And now with like AI and Photoshop, we're like learning that they're actually corrupt. That's one potential yeah. thing. Okay, okay. The other, the other potential thing is what is going on with Kate right now? I think there's only three scenarios end game for Kate right now. One okay. is that she's very sick and she cannot pose for real photos or do a real video. If she was able to, Mike, wouldn't you think that they would put her on camera just like this, torso up, you don't have to show her abdomen or anything and say, I'm Kate Middleton, everything is fine. Today is March 11, 2024. I'm with my family recovering, don't worry about me. If she was okay, they would have put that out. So one, she's so unwell, she can't do that. Mm -hmm. Two. I'm sorry this is going down a dark road, but she's not on this earth anymore is number two. Like she's so yes. unwell, she's not alive. Yep. And number three, probably the most real life scenario is that she and William are divorced. She may or may not be leaving the palace. They probably don't want it known that she wants to leave the palace mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And then what do they do to her? Will they let her leave? Are they keeping her as a prisoner? Mm. Will they potentially um, out her? I don't know if they go to that level. It's, I don't know if they're like Saudi Arabia or not over there in the UK. I don't Royals. know. Who knows? Um, those are my three scenarios. Sick, dead, or divorced. Now, yeah, I, I, I think, listen, at this point, they're all very likely. Uh, but I would dig down that Thomas, uh, what's his name again? Thomas, uh, Thomas Kingston Road. Dig down yeah. that a little bit, and you'll kind of see a lot of people put out like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. A lot of people from the, 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 the whatever, the royalty family put yeah. that out. I don't know what's going on, but something fishy is definitely happening. And once we see her now, I will say today, supposedly, uh, they saw, saw her in a car. Now that reading, okay, Mike, there the are better imagery of UFOs I know. I know. than her I in know. that car today. It was like behind. It was like kind of turn around like this. I know what if you're are not we watching, doing? It's like all right, guys. Like okay, some lady that kind of looks like her profile. Now there also could be another conspiracy. They're trying to find a replacement for her. And the person that steps in, kind of like the theory. I don't know if you've seen the theory about Joe Paul Biden. McCartney. Oh, oh, the Joe Biden one. Have you seen the? Joe I don't know Biden? that one. There's a Paul. There's a fake Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney died yes. 30 years ago, and there's a new Paul McCartney. The Is that the same Joe, for Joe? Joe Biden. They think they might have replaced him because if you look at his face, he had like a different chin line, and now it's like a little different. It's a little like tighter here. Either Wait, he's getting. This is this is the good version, the new version. Yeah, this is. The <laughs> This is what they swapped yeah. him in for? This is what they swapped him in for, yeah. I mean, on the other side, Joe had some good energy at the State of the Union, I thought. He actually uh, he actually brought it. They, they kept saying he was having a lot of energy behind closed doors. <laughs> he finally brought a little energy. <laughs> finally I, brought it. Can I tell you? I think they fucking juiced him up with some, some uh, adrenaline before that show. Well, if you said caffeine, that'd be like legal and okay. No, but no, if no, there's no. anything else, it might not be okay. But you're right. He was, he was pretty fired up. He's pretty fired up because when you see him other times like eating ice cream, he's like, where am I? Why are people asking me questions about this? It's like, I'm eating ice cream right now. Please don't ask me about uh, okay. the don't war put that in the clip, Middle East. Don't put this clip on TikTok. Put the Kate Milden clip on TikTok. Yes. We need TikTok experts. We want to become Kate Milden experts because our both of our TikToks are now full of this. And we need you to comment. Are we right? Are we wrong? Are we missing something? Again, it's like the NBA. We're not experts. We just like to talk about I, it. You know what? So let us know. I, I'm going to get a quote from my sister. I think she's a big royal family follower. So I'm going to see if she knows anything about it. Uh, but this is, we're going to keep our eye on it. We'll keep you updated if anything yeah. changes. Uh, this is right up yeah. our alley. Scandal, it conspiracy. Really and it's the summer. It's like spring, yeah. summer. We got, we got nothing going on right now. Uh, a few more scandals to hit on, Mike, before, yeah. before we go. Antonio Brown is breaking news on Twitter with oh. the hashtag... 
Hashtag CTESPN. Have you seen this? He's now no. an NFL insider with his CTE ESPN hashtag. Uh, breaking news of signings. He's breaking a lot of news. Making fun of Barstool oh. lately. Very entertaining on Twitter. Okay, oh, i got to check that out. No, I've not seen that at all. Uh, that's one for you. Another one. Temple basketball is being investigated for game fixing. Did you see this over the weekend? No. Um, there was a, There was weird activity on the game. Uh, it was a Temple basketball hmm. game playing someone. Late bets. activity that was fla- late bets that was flagged by this um, gaming commission who's like a third-party, non-biased, flagged it for having weird activity, and Temple lost badly in a game they oh. should have won. Temple may have tanked that game weird. to help sports bettors. Ain't, that's interesting. Okay, I like that. Okay. That's you like great. that? I like that, yeah. What if you bet on Temple and then the other side was was points fixing? Listen, a lot of weird stuff's going on, and that's why I think paying college students is going to get a little. Uh, oh, I got somebody knocking at my door. Hold, hold on one oh. one second. You just you keep talking. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, I'm just going to keep going with one more one more. Uh, yeah, you, you keep going. Hold you on. go. You go answer your door. This is uh, the world of live podcasts. Uh, the one more scandal I was going to share with you all is there was a brawl in a women's college basketball game over the weekend. The SEC right. championship. Mike, I was just telling people about the SEC championship. Yeah. As someone walks behind you, what a time. Hey, what a time. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC women's championship over the weekend. I said that three times. LSU, South Carolina. Uh, there was a brawl in the game, and it was kind of crazy oh. um, how it ended with a brawl of these two top-ranked teams. And at first, they said all players in this game that fought are suspended for the first round of the tournament, which would have been so significant. Like, LSU is the number one team, I think. Um, but they're not suspended. It's okay. But there was an actual women's basketball brawl that was pretty entertaining, but also probably shouldn't support that at that level. Is women's basketball taking over men's basketball? Because I feel like no one's talking about men's basketball anymore. Nothing's going on over there. And Caitlin Clark with Iowa. It's honestly, yeah. she's so excited to watch she makes threes like she's kobe or steph it's yeah, awesome it's crazy. and uh they're a great team i've been watching iowa women's basketball i'm not afraid to admit it you're you're becoming a big basketball guy basically the last few days you've just been crunching numbers watching nba getting ready for the playoffs i have some exciting nba content we're not going to get to it today we're already past our past our time limit okay. here but coming up in a few weeks uh we'll do some nba uh talks some nba rankings because i've been diving into the western conference rounds what we do have time for i don't know if you have more stories i got one more yeah, here no i got nothing it's got our nothing. weekly Bronny James okay, update. Wow. We're going to have to get a drop for this. Do we have What's a drop for this yet? What's going on with Bronny? Yeah, no, I just wanted me. to tell you, uh, people are, are all over us on TikTok for saying we don't know ball and Bronny's going to join LeBron and take the Lakers to a title. Chill out because I got a Bronny update for you. Let's USC go. men's basketball had a rough season led by Bronny James. Had a rough season. They're not going any March Madness. There's no madness here in no. LA. They're moving no. on to football season. They did beat. Number five, Arizona, on Saturday, right here at the Galen Center, right right oh. downtown, Mike. They beat number five, which was great. And Bronny James, I just want to read you the stat line. He probably made an impact, right, because they beat number five, Arizona. He probably had a huge game, uh, right? What's, what, what's the stat line? Bronny James, he played 20 minutes. Must have made a huge Whoa, contribution. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Five points, three fouls, one turnover. Bronny actually didn't even contribute. To pulling off the upset against number five. And TikTok, I'm talking to you. We know ball more than you. Bronny James will not join LeBron with the Lakers. Oh, Bronny James so. will not join the NBA. Bronny James might not play another year at USC. The minor leagues are calling. Europe is calling. Go play ball where you don't have to be very good because that's where yeah. Bronny James belongs. I, I'm, I'm going to say we did see uh, Jeannie Bus getting real cozy with some other lady with LeBron court side what was that at, about? at a game where he was sitting out they were snoozing and you know talking about stuff a lot of a lot of memes out there you know he's getting a statue getting 120 million dollars I, I think there's a lot of like lebron is integrated so much into this franchise they're gonna get Bronny. i don't care like if they're just gonna pick him up off the street they're gonna get Bronny into this team because he wants to play with them and I know you don't think so, but this man's going Mike, there's pro. a better chance LeBron leaves than Bronny joins. How about that? Oh, you think? Oh, no. Yeah. no. Not after not after those genie pictures. Pull up. Once we pull I, up those genie I, pictures, I, you're going to see it. I saw the genie pictures, and they were getting uh, cozy. And I don't know if his wife, Savannah, was okay with that. I wouldn't I be think he's if, in the dog if my man was, was getting no. cozy like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, LeBron... And the Lakers, they're not even going to barely make the playoffs. I've been telling you, I've been watching NBA, watching the West. They're not very good. He needs more assets and scores. He doesn't need a kid who played 20 minutes in a college basketball game who scored five points and had three fouls. Jeremy, I agree with you, but I disagree because Jeannie and LeBron, something's going on on the sideline, and 
it's not good because uh, LeBron's basically in control of this team and he gets what he wants and he's going to get a statue right next to Kobe out there and Shaq and that's The new it. Kobe statue, uh, I saw it recently. You're going to see it in a few weeks when we go to a hockey game. It just it just debuted. It's really so awesome. It's one of three, right? They're doing like three Kobe statues? Oh, I didn't see all I three. Thought, I only I saw were, one. Yeah, I only saw one too, but I thought they were revealing one and then revealing another one and I thought there was going to be three of them for some reason. I don't Maybe know Maybe they haven't Maybe. revealed the others? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I just thought there was three of them, but... Yeah, a lot of statues out there. Yeah, we're going to a uh, hockey game soon. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Drink. What are we celebrating? We're, we're celebrating me having a child. Oh my god! <laughs> we're celebrating your wife going through uh, nine yeah. months and then delivery. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done much yet. So, uh, You're all right, good, good show. Check out the sportsingover.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Mostly YouTube. Go over there. Subscribe. Listen, even if you don't go on your YouTube and watch shows just subscribe to us that that matters to us we're trying to get monetized over there bring you more shows more content i mean look how good we look we have video on right now years and years <laughs> of video we we need more of this and merch uh, too and merch look at the, the great gray hat uh so check out the sports good show see you